Well, welcome back to our fresh days for yet another episode. Episode 39, maybe? Maybe 40 marks some success. But yeah, episode 39 on the M113 build. So, as some of you guys may know, I've been slacking and not touching this for ages. I made a little bit of progress the other day. And now I have less than two weeks. Well, two weeks time. Now we should be probably chilling out on the campsite after a day of already doing things and being there for a day. Um, in this very Capri, somehow, uh, we haven't even done any snagging yet. Why? Because we haven't even got a new ECU in. So, this episode is going to be, for me, an exciting one. Uh, I've caught up on a bit of sleep, not much, but we're doing wiring now, so I'm pretty buzzing, to be honest. Um, that is my, that's, that's my thing. I like that. So, what do we need to do in this episode, other than a horrific amount of work? And probably by the time you guys see this, it's going to be less than a week away. It will be less than a week away, if not less. Right, what do we need to do? So as I showed you guys last time, in the last episode, I have been and bought myself a Max ECU race. Most expensive thing I've ever bought for the Capri. <laughs> um, took a lot of deciding on different ECUs and whatnot. Uh, I didn't want to absolutely spend a stupid amount of money, so I spent almost a stupid amount of money. <laughs> but something that's going to be more than capable and future-proofed. And if I do any other projects in the future, using an automatic gearbox like the AHP, which I rather love. These things can all work with them, which is pretty incredible. So I kind of want to get involved in the Max and try it out because it's got future potential for different projects. Um, it does look really impressive, to be honest, but not quite on the same price level as a Speedy. <laughs> Nonetheless, why do I need to go for this? Well, I never finished tuning the Speedy, but I'm also not sure if I've got an issue or two with it. And I want to do some upgrades. In the end, it was... Easier just to go for a different ECU because you may remember I had a few issues. I had to custom make a manual throttle body, which does work, but it's not perfect. I could never get it to close fully because I repurposed a electronic throttle body. They weren't designed to close fully and it's just been a bit of a pig. So I put springs in there and then I had to use an idle control valve and that control valve just failed and it was a pain. And yeah, so what I've decided in the end by far the better route to go is to go back to electronic throttle body. Um, now I've got this random AMG one here, which can actually come on that engine, so the second engine. I don't know why it's got an AMG one. Makes no difference, it's the same size, but oh well. So, we're going to try to wire that up to the max, and then out of crossfire, I've stole the electronic pedal. Um, I'm hoping this will fit. If not, I think there is an Audi one out there. No, it's not. It may be a Golf one I can steal out there. So the idea is to wire this up to that. If we get that working successfully, there should then be nothing stopping me wiring that into the car, which is not a two-second job, but we'll come on to that um, using all this wiring. And also we're going to be good boys, girls and people and persons and well, I don't know what not. Two more ignition drivers. So you guys may remember this thing has 16 coils, 16 spark plugs. Uh, Speedy only had four outputs, um, so I was only ever able to run it in batch, and I had to pair up, basically, I used two drivers and then paired up coils and so on. Now, every coil is getting its own driver, and we're running sequential eight cylinders from cam and crank signal. That's the idea. So it should be much better, but it's more work, and then I've got to learn my way around Max ECU and tune it. So I'm going to shut up now. So a quick bit of research, I found a service manual for a crossfire. In that manual, it had all the little um, connectors, the shape of them, where the pins were, what they do and what colours they should be. And would you believe it, for this CLK throttle body and this crossfire pedal, all the colours and pins were dead right. Now, I need to actually check with a multimeter in a second that they actually do what they're meant to do. So, I might... Okay, so it looks like we need power to the pedal to get any readings. That's not giving me any um, any variable readings anyway. What about a throttle body in that? Is that only power or not any power? So let's go. Sense of ground is grey. This could be the same story now though. And position sensor white and yellow ones. Point six five K. Oh yeah. That gives us a read in, and 
right. 1.2K. One. Yeah, perfect. That's working. So what I'm going to do a second is just look at the wiring diagrams for the Max ECU. Wire it up to us a minute. Um, check if we actually need, I guess we need to power the ECU up for 12 volt. I guess I'll get that sorted. Wire these up and then see if we can configure in the settings, see if it works. So what on earth have I just done here? Well, we've got a battery. We've got an ECU. I've separated out uh, the power, ground, 5 volt and sensor ground lines out of the main harness. Um, and I've separated out the throttle position sensor stuff, uh, throttle body stuff and pedal position sensor stuff out of the second harness um, as per diagrams. So I think I'm now ready to put some power to it. What I haven't done though, is the only thing I haven't kept up is the two motor connections. Um, ignore the little way goes for now, I just going to make it easy and safe. Um, just because according to Max, they are 12 volt outputs. Now that would make sense, I think 12 volt over 5 volt would make a lot of sense for a throttle body. Um, but there is only a sensor ground on the throttle body connection, not a general ground. So if they are 12 volt, then yeah it's got to be there you can't use a sensor ground to put the motor back in through so what i've done is i've put a ground cable directly to the throttle body and to the battery but i've not connected those two yet i can check if a pedal works first and if the sensors and these sensors work I then risk putting 12 volt to them i have got a spare throttle body needed <laughs> but if i can't put 12 volt to them um or whatever it is then or pwm then i'm gonna have to find a different throttle body which is going to be a big problem. So, I reckon we're ready just to pop the fuse in a minute, see if anything goes bang. I really hope it doesn't. But the problem is, obviously with an ECU with a loom this size, you've got a whole lot of unterminated stuff. And I haven't got the time to make all that safe, which is a problem. <laughs> so let's just hope it's all good. Uh, I only put a little four amp fuse in there, so let's just... Yeah. Shouldn't there we go? Right, didn't pop. I've got no idea there's any lights on this thing, not a clue. Uh, nor do I even know how to add it to the software. A minute, so I guess I'm gonna have a quick play a minute. Okay, that was cheeky. I just assumed that uh, when I saw 12 volt ECU one here that feeds in there, that these cables were linked, they're not. In this plug here, they're separate. So I've just put the other one in there. So I guess now we'll try and power it up and see what happens. Please no smoke, please no smoke. Oh, get a pop. Oh, I know. Oh. Well, nothing's on fire yet. Straight up, we've had a TPS sense error, but does not apply to e-throttle vehicles. And that is because we're not using this TPS signal here. I guess we are using these ones here. So now I'm gonna guess my way through configuring this a minute. Good bit to learn through here, but I've got a throttle or pedal position, and I've got throttle body position. Just gotta work out. I haven't actually connected the throttle power up yet. Just gotta work out how to configure and tune that now and see what's what. So I'm learning my way around this now. <laughs> I thought uh, it won't work in so and so, like if I activate an output I'd get a signal here for the throttle body and so on. But couldn't work out why it didn't work. Turns out, because I ha didn't have the motor connections connected, when I pressed the throttle it flagged up an error on the system. That error then stopped me using the throttle until I'd cleared the code and connected the motor up. <laughs> I honestly didn't think it was that smart. So this thing surprises me now. Um, but I have successfully moved the throttle body, so now I've got to work out the duty cycle. So I need to work out how much percentage duty it is to open the throttle fully and it's to close it. So we're going to quickly find out those figures now, and then I can input them into the computer, and then we'll see if the pedal works. Oh, 
got a little bit of a play, a little bit of a to be fair to Max ECU, uh, like how to is pretty damn helpful. Checked over it. All good. So what we've got not now, it's a throttle body. We got a pedal, does that. And then we got here, these here is our graph for our actual throttle position and our desired throttle or target throttle position. You see? They are like on the button pretty much. And then this thing here has, see how we press it, has just, so see, just very, very accurate. Nice. So I would say that is configured. Beautiful. So we know the pedal works, we know the throttle body works, which means there is no reason that ECU now can't go in the car. Oh, which is good to be honest, because Instantly, that setup there is 50 million times better than what I've already got. And not only that, because I've got that, I can have cruise control in a car I never drive. <laughs> and with the complete wrong gearing for any kind of cruising at the minute. But yeah, I can have cruise control now. <clears throat> <sighs> so that's that part done. I need to build a wiring loom for that one now. Build a wiring loom for that one. And pull all the old ECU out and start working out what I can do. So, there's the... Uh, AMG throttle body, sort of prepped. Should have bought a gasket for it, shouldn't I? Oh well. There's my old throttle body, old cable one, which done the job, but yeah, not anymore. So that gasket, I can't remember if it's just silicon or what it is now, but I don't have a new one, so I might have to RTV it for now. Maybe order a gasket just in case and go from there, really. So that's all fair. All stripped back, all the throttle bits and bobs stripped off. Actually, no, I don't. I need to remove one of the brackets still. Throttle cable might be in the way, and then we can bolt the electronic one on. Hmm, is that gonna have a good evening? <laughs> no, because <laughs> I bought that. I wanted one of these for years, just never got around to it. So, well, now I've got one. So, a little smoke leak detector. So, the idea is you put some mineral oil or baby oil in this little thing here, heats it up like a smoke machine does, and it's got a little built-in compressor, and um, it pumps it out, and you can use it, oh, I'm filming the wrong way around, aren't I? Oops. To check for uh, vacuum leaks, boost leaks, exhaust leaks, uh, all sorts, really. Now, I'm sure I've got a vacuum leak on this. Well, I always seem to have more air getting into the engine, like, usually, you would, you know, an engine, you'd better kill the air, but you can pretty much, from memory, blank the throttle body on this beforehand, and it would still run. So the idle air control valve was basically useless. So, it could have just been a leak on the throttle body, which now may be solved, but uh, what we'll do is I'll block that off in a minute, plumb this thing in, fill it with smoke, and see if we've got any vacuum leaks, because obviously if we do, that's going to cause a big issue trying to tune it and all that anyway, so better off working out now than scratching my head down the line. And there we go, vacuum leak worked out. So I blocked off the intake, fed back in for a boost hose, and found out that... Nope. Not effective, to be honest. Um, smoke was come back out here. So... So right here we've got a crankcase breather line. Well, valve cover breather line either way. It goes into the manifold side of the throttle body. So it's under constant vacuum from the engine. That goes through here. Then here is a breather. It used to go into what would have been this piece originally. Um, now, at the minute, we're able to pass air both ways. So vacuum is literally being drawn in from there and back into the engine. Whereas, obviously, you don't want vacuum coming in from here. Surely going back, bypassing the throttle body. That would be bad. So I'm sure there's meant to be either a one-way valve in here, which is broken, or, I never, no, it's just a bit of hard pipe, it used to go from here to the thingy, I'm sure. Either way, it seems like I need a one-way valve, because I don't need air going in there, I just need positive pressure being able to come out, I guess, instead. So maybe one-way valve there, that would solve it. So, there's a few ways I can solve this, but, um, supposedly reading one forum, apparently there was, in the joiners in the factory pipes, there was 1.5mm restrictors which would kind of make sense. So what would happen is um, you'd have a restrictor in here, 
So on idle, you get your vacuum through here and it pull a bit of crankcase ventilation out. And then under load, obviously you get a lot more vacuum and it pour through here, through outside the throttle body. Kind of makes a lot of sense. Um, however, I stripped apart all the factory breather hoses, because well, they fell apart, and there was absolutely no restrictors in the joiner, the main fit in, the hoses, nothing. So that still confused me. Um, but if I put a hose on here and I suck and I blow, it's fairly unrestricted. Uh, on that side, it is restricted. Um, it's much more difficult. So, I fix this the only way I know how. And that's with JB Weld. Because me and JB Weld, we do well together. So what I've done is I've taken one of these factory joiners. Um, there's a few of them. And I've filled it with JB Weld. Now, when that sets, I'm going to drill a restriction hole through the inside of it. And I can experiment that way. And put basically restriction in line with a hose to this side of a breather. Um... And see, yeah, it, that would make perfect sense as to my uh, idle issues I had, at least previously. Uh, we'll give it a go, see what happens, really. I guess you won't know now until it runs. But, um, yeah, I'll get on, wait for that set, drill that hole. I'm still waiting on some electrical fittings, and then we'll be uh, cracking back on my ECU. So I've actually no idea where this video has ended up. I am still shattered. Still not sleeping, right? But now we are, well put it, put it this way, this time next week, I need to be loaded up. <laughs> all the camping stuff, all the tools, all the spares, with a fully working Capri. I'm also now one member of staff down. Great. <laughs> and work doesn't slow up. But oh well. What we've got is what we've achieved in this video, which was stuff, throttle body and all that stuff. But I think I've now already talked enough, and the video's probably already long enough. And I'm about to start, it's now 20 to 6, I think, Friday evening. Uh, I haven't had a chance to wipe ECU yet, I've been knackered. I've kind of booked a weekend off for this. So I've decided that, because I can't sleep anyway most of the time, I've got cold snacks, I've got snacks, I've got all sorts. I am just going to basically sit at my desk, wiring up that ECU, until I physically can't hold my eyes open. I might even fall asleep in the workshop. With any luck, that'd be nice actually. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna leave you guys to it. Uh, I think this has already been a long enough video. If you don't see this, then it wasn't, and I kept it anyway. But maybe I can get this edited in the morning and you guys can have it. You could... I can't. <laughs> so yeah, <laughs> I'm just gonna crack on. I'm gonna start wiring, and you guys will see the finished result in the next video, which will come out before I go away, because it needs to run before I go away. So it'll be before the following Saturday. If not, Things have gone really wrong. So remember to like, comment, and subscribe. Not that the content's any good these days, it's terrible, but oh well. Thank you guys. Thank you guys for the support. I know um, a lot of you like the fact I was back. I wish I could be back, back, but life's just been difficult with work, and yeah, I was going to prior prioritize my future as opposed to the channel. Well, I absolutely love doing it and playing with cars. So yeah, I will see you guys directly. Thank you for watching.